Hey everyone, this is Terry. Today I'm going to show you how to create an applique using a book or a pattern that you have. I happen to have a Kimberbell book that is a spring collection. It has this little umbrella. And what I'm going to do is create an applique with it. Now I could scan this on my copy machine, save it to a USB stick, and use the JPEG and my design center. But we're going to use a scanning frame. The first thing when you use the scanning frame, don't cover up this black and white line. I've removed my needle from my machine because I don't want it to cut, uh, catch the pages. I made sure that my book is laying over the back of my embroidery arm and supported. And I took all my magnets and I placed them around here to hold this and make it secure. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we'll choose to do a line image scan. We'll choose scan and it's going to scan. Now make sure you don't place your hand in front of the camera. Let the machine do the work. It won't take that long for it to scan. And as it's scanning, you can think about some of the things that you might want to do with your little applique. What would be cute with this is to, to create the applique and then we'll create a separate, separate stitch for the handle. And then what you could do is just stitch a little bow on the handle that you make out of ribbon. And it's very easy to create something whimsical once you have a pattern similar to this. Now let's look at the screen. So you know what we can see on the screen here. And by the way, if you are not a member of my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire, I have live videos in that group. And we also have things that are recorded or shared within the group that you will not find on YouTube. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to crop this off. Now, if you happen to own a scan and cut, you may be familiar with this process. You need to make sure you capture all of the image on the inside. And I'm just going to try to move it over a little bit. And I believe I've got everything. I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now, prior to scanning, I selected this little double running stitch in the red color. And now this is a chance to adjust the grayscale detection. I can bump this up if I feel like I need to so that it improves the overall image and choose retry. Let's just do that so you can see what happens. And let's try moving it down and choose retry. And it's actually darker in this position. So I'll choose OK and choose set. All right, now what I want to do is I, I don't need this background image any longer. So this will lighten it. If you click over here to the right, it darkens it. And what I want to do is to delete it. While my design is selected, I want to rotate it. So go to rotate, let's ro rotate 90 degrees. Now let's just take this and place it here. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and edit it. So let's go in and let's go to about 400%, use the hand, and we need to erase the things we don't need. Now you see some little artifacts like this here. That's really not going to show up so much whenever you're working, but you can erase some of them if they bother you. We're going to erase this text because we don't need that text. And if you need to zoom in to a higher percentage, you can do that. You can go all the way up to 1600% now. Let's take the hand and we'll just continue by picking up the eraser and we'll erase those items. We can go around the outside of this design just to make sure that it's closed off. But when you do that, select the hand so you don't erase the wrong thing. Now, what we could do is we can correct this little place here, take the eraser, and I just like to use the tip of it. There we go. And I'll go on the inside and I'll just clean it up a little bit. All right, that's good. Let's take the hand and go around. One way to see if this is closed off is go get a decorative bill and just see if you try to fill this, if it goes outside. Now, obviously you need to grab the bucket. So grab the bucket. You can see that it stayed contained. 
let's undo and undo one more time and let's go back to 100%. So we now have the top of this and we can create our applique. We already had the first stitch, believe it or not. So what we're going to do is go to next and it's right now set at two millimeters for the stitch length. I'll just bump it up to about 2.2 and choose okay. Now what I want to do is save that. I'll save it to memory. I like to save to my machine and I'll choose return. Now that created the, the placement stitch so you know where to place your material. This is a conventional applique where you cut with scissors. So now what we want to do is we want to go select an, another color. We'll leave it as a double running stitch. I wish we had a single running stitch, but we don't. And now what we're going to do is take that bucket and we'll apply it again. Let's go to next. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save this to memory. All right, we'll choose return. As you're going through this, don't move anything. You want it to be in that position. Now we're going to do the little V stitch that's a tack down stitch. We'll choose this dark green so we can see it. We'll take the bucket, we'll touch that line, we'll choose next. Now we'll, let's adjust this a little bit because it's going to be underneath our outside satin stitch. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce it to about 1.5. I just want it to catch my fabric and hold it securely. And then what I'm going to do is I, I can adjust my spacing to about six millimeters. And we only need this to go around one time. You, you don't necessarily need it more than that to secure it. And depending on the type of applique, there may be some instances on the inside where you need to flip it. And this is where you flip it. We don't, so we'll choose okay. Now let's save that to memory. That's the big thing you have to remember is you want to save these steps to memory. Now we're ready for our satin stitch. So let's go to that satin stitch and select it. We'll choose a nice dark color and we'll choose this dark blue. Choose OK. We'll take the bucket and we'll apply it. Now let's go to next. And let's make this about, uh, let's say, three and a half to four millimeters. And choose OK. Now you want to say that to memory. All right. Now we're ready to create our little stem. Now our little stem is going to be something that is just a, a, a little stitch that we draw kind of like a J. So let's choose return. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I need to choose the open tool. Let me choose a stitch I want. I think I'll use a chain stitch. It's always been one of my favorite. And I'll choose this kind of hot pink color. The colors are for color stops. They're not necessarily what I use for my design. So don't worry about that. And I want this open tool that's a curved tool. And this is where I'm going to draw freehand. I'll go to 200% so I can really see. I don't want to touch the top, but I want it to be close. And I'll just start right here. And you notice what I did is I applied that stitch, undo. What I need to do is I need to be a little bit away from it and did that again. And the problem was I'm doing the wrong thing. So let me undo again. I need to choose the right tool, duh. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get close and let's draw that. Uh, it may not be perfect, but you get the general idea. I'm doing this freehand. So this is going to be my handle for my umbrella. What I'll do is I'll choose next. And this is where I have my stitch width right now is 4.0 millimeters. If I want to make that wider, then that, it's looking at the zigzag. So that's not what I want to change. I need to go down here and on this particular stitch, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll make that just slightly wider and I'll choose OK and I don't want it to be five times. I'll choose, 
let's just go with three and choose OK. And let's save that to memory. Now, what we're going to do is go home. We're exiting my design center, which is different than what you usually do. A lot of times you'll set the, the design, but in this case, we're building components. And let's see what it looks like if we go to embroidery and we go to the embroidery pocket. Now, what I'm hoping that I have is I have the components that I need. And some instances, I may need not all of these, but parts of them. So we'll grab the first stitch and we'll set it. This is going to be where we place our fabric, so that's good. Let's choose add. Let's go back to the pocket. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to choose that second stitch. And this is what's going to hold that fabric down so we can cut it. So we'll choose set. Now let's choose add. We're going to go back to the pocket. And in this case, we're going to pick up the third stitch. And that third stitch is going to be that B stitch. And we'll choose set and we'll choose add now in the next one what we're going to do is we're going to skip one of these because we want to get all the way to the end and that way we'll get our satin stitch and we'll get our handle and let's select it so we skip the the one that was just the satin stitch and we're going to choose set all right, we have our entire design here completed. So what we want to do is group it together and we'll group everything together and choose OK. And I'll say this to memory. Now let's watch it stitch out and see what happens. So we'll go in, zoom in, and we'll use the stitch player and we'll watch it stitch out. So it stitches that first line and that tells you where to put your fabric. It stitched the second line, held the fabric down so you could cut it. Then it did the tack down. Now it's doing the satin stitch. And then the next stitch is going to be our little handle and our applique is complete. And all you have to do is add a little bow to that handle and it's cute as it can be. I'm Terry Maffitt. Join me in Facebook with the Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire group. Today what we've done is we created an applique by scanning it in my design center using a magazine or a book. Let me show you the book we use so that you you know. A lot of times Kimberbell sells the books both as a digitized design, but she also has the sewing designs. And in that book, in the back, you'll notice that she has those patterns. So you can use my design center to create this. And if you really wanted to embellish it, what you could have done is added a fill to the top of this so that you had a little decorative stitch in the top of your umbrella. Have a great day, everyone, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.